right. So benchmarking is the first step, a first step to building decarbonization. Um, many of you may not know that Ann Arbor has a um, mandatory benchmarking um, for parcels with buildings that are greater than 20,000 square feet. And typically um, buildings that are owner occupied uh, can be exempted from this benchmarking ordinance. It's basically there to um, uh, as a consumer protection. That was sort of the legal um, piece behind it. And there is a, um, you know, if you're interested, there's a very step-by-step -step guide to benchmarking uh, with the city of Ann Arbor, which is basically the process that we follow. Um, and then the 2030 district, um, we uh, help you benchmark your energy use, your water use. And then we also have a transportation survey because um, transportation is also a, a major component of the greenhouse gas emissions that we're trying to reduce. Um, uh, so benchmarking through Energy Star Portfolio Manager also provides you resources. And there's a really nice action workbook for congregations. They also have a, um, a treasure hunt process that you can go through. Um, so this is the a link and we'll send this out to folks. It's, it'd be good um, if you just put your, um, we didn't do a registration. So if you put your email in the chat, we'll take that out and make sure you get the slides. And this is just a link um, that to all of the Energy Star resources for congregations. And with that, I'll go ahead and have Murray start with his, how he does his benchmarking. All right. <clears throat> So you got to stop. The, there you go. So share. All right. So this is the Energy Star Portfolio Manager website. And oh, about, I don't know, four or five years ago, uh, Jen had a had a an in-person an in meeting where she showed everybody how to register for this. And we actually did the registration during that that meeting, which was a great help. So my congregation is Genesis of Ann Arbor, and you can see it here. So I'll just click on there. And this just takes us to this menu. And the main menu that, that I always use is this one called Energy. And you can see that it's it's tracking our energy use back to July of 18, which is uh, what, what about five years ago. And I'll make it uh, bigger. So you can see that uh, the red line is the, the gas because that goes up and down, up in the winter, down in the summer. Now the blue line is the electric uh, which stays pretty constant throughout the year. And we just got our solar panels installed in February of 2020, right before the pandemic. And you can see that the solar generation goes up in the summer and down in the winter, as you would expect. And this is a just a, a great way to, to view your, your energy usage. So I'm going to escape out of there. And now I'm going to show you how I enter my bills. So all you have to do is each month is you can you can get your bills. You can get your DTE bill, right? Which can which probably has your both your gas and your electricity on there. And you can also get your water bill from the city of Ann Arbor. And you just hit enter your bills. Okay. And then so this is your meter. So you can see the different meters we have. We have an electric grid meter, a, a solar meter, a natural gas meter, and a, a water meter. And so all I have to do to enter my bills is I, I go down to the bottom. You can see our bills are entered here. And you just have to enter your uh, your kilowatt hours and, and the cost, because that can also be uh, graphed. You just go down here and I'm going to pretend I'm going to add another entry and I'm going to pretend it's uh, 
October 7th and I have my bill, right? I only get, that's about the time of the month we get our bill and I'm just gonna enter some dummy data here. And all I have to do is go down here and hit save. And that saves the bill. And you can do the same thing, uh, the solar meter. So a little bit more information. We have the date range. We have, so this is the, the amount of solar energy that we used on site. This is the energy that we put back on the grid. And this is the total cost that we paid to the LLC, which owns our solar panels. So I talked about that in a previous meeting. We we had a group of 20 congregants get together. They formed an LLC and they bought the, our our huge uh, solar system, 160 panels on our roof, two of our roofs, 80 on each roof. And each month they get paid by us for the solar power generated. And you can see like up here in uh, December, it wasn't a lot of money because we didn't generate a lot of solar power, but in the summer it's, it's quite a bit. And and that's uh, essentially how you you enter your bills. And Jan, I'm gonna give it back to Jan and she can say, well, it's not even that hard because there's a way you can automatically do some of this. So I'm gonna stop yeah. the share and give it back to Jan. Okay, um, yeah. So we'll go through some of these um, so you can see how it works. But um, and the 2030 district um, has three sources of of data that we can get. One is from DTE and many most people have their uh, power and their uh, gas from DTE. But um, some folks do get Constellation gas and we actually can't automate that, but we do get an Excel spreadsheet from them that makes it very easy to upload into Energy Star. And then um, we can also get data from the City of Ann Arbor Aquahawk. And if you don't have a, a City of Ann Arbor Aquahawk account, it's a very, um, it, it's very handy because you can actually set a, um, an alert if there is a, an unexpected water use. So if you have a leak somewhere or whatever, and, and it also gives you um, some data on the, the use of your water. So you can analyze the, the water data too. Um, next, I'm, I'm gonna go to these websites. Um, and uh, right now through the 2030 districts, you if you're a member, um, you get access to what's called the, uh, the data hub. And that's where your DTE data goes that can then be put into Energy Star Portfolio Manager. And I'm gonna to go to the actual site because it, it's very helpful. And then we also have another tool um, that we use for um, analysis and that's called Buildy. And it just, we can just share our data with Buildy. They're, we, we are helping them, they're resolving some unit issues with water right now. So um, we imported some buildings and then we stopped while they were working on some things. But that, I'm meeting with them on Friday and that should be fixed. And so we'll be able to have that tool too. Um, so um, it, I'm going to jump to my, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to jump to a different window so I can show you these tools live. Um, so let's go to um, boop, boop, boop. Yeah. um right. share. It's always fun sharing multiple windows. So this is a, a sorority that I manage. And basically what, um, can you see the screen okay? Is it coming up? Um, yeah, so what's really nice about it is you can then go through and it shows you, a, you know, the comparison of your, this is their gas use. 
and you can uh, click over here and you get your, your electric use um, throughout the history. And this one, you can tell we've done quite a bit of work since 2018 on reducing our electric use um, and a little bit on uh, reducing, you know, here's the, um, the 2018 gas down to um, much less gas use um, in the house, especially over um, some of the summer months. Um, so this is where your data goes and it gets, and then from here, um, you can connect it to uh, directly into Energy Star. And this is just showing that this data is getting um, transmitted for gas and electric. Um, and I think what's helpful about the data hub is just having those, um, you know, the, the actual um, overview of your um, use, because it's, and you can also, if you want to, um, you know, download the data from here, you can download it from Energy Star Portfolio Manager too. So it's just another way of being able to look and you can, you know, clip this and put it in a report if you're reporting to, you know, your congregation and how well your, your energy conservation is, et cetera. Right now, the Data Hub does not bring in your solar meters. So the only place you can really look at your solar generation is Energy Star Portfolio Manager. We hope that'll change within a year and that will automatically go in. So you do have to enter your solar meter manually. Everything else will come in automatically. Um, the other thing, um, if any of you have signed up for um, My Green Power, um, that is also um, a manual entry. However, uh, the 2030 district has sort of an AI program that if you tell us what the percentage is, we can go in and um, do all of that for an entire year, two years, how many, you know, depending how far back you enrolled in the program. So we have some little tweaks to be able to do that. Um, next, I'm gonna just show you- um, Jan? Yes. Can I, sorry, uh, hopefully a quick question. Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, for to get the data to the Energy Star, you just kind of, I, I, I don't know, I think I might have missed a step. It, you have to like provide your DTE account information or to yeah. connect the data from DTE to Energy there Star. Do you use that enrollment. intermediate? Yeah, there's an enrollment process for the automated data system. We can help you with that. There's basically a consent, which um, right. the person who is your authorized energy user has to sign. And there's an enrollment form, which um, basically is the person that's going to be using the data hub. And you can make the 2030 district an additional user on your data hub so we can help you, you know, if you run into any issues. Typically, a single building is very straightforward. It's the campuses right. and... Um, multiple buildings that cause more issues. So, okay. So, is that it's yeah. if if someone wanted to do this automatically, reach out to twenty thirty district and get yes. help that way, or is there like a white paper or something that has steps? It's the um, the benchmarking guide does have steps. I have to send you the enrollment forms because right now the data hub is restricted to twenty thirty district members. So okay. um, they hope to roll it out within a year to the full. Um, um, any customer, but um, they promised that two years ago. So we're hoping maybe they'll make it this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just want to know for my information, uh, my congregation is part of Genesis. So I, I oh, think yeah. we already have this worked on. And I don't know if it sounds like maybe we're doing some of the steps manually, but if anyone else was interested, I'd like to be able to say, hey, there's an easy step and you don't require like 20 minutes every month to go in and enter it manually. But right. that, that's good to know that you've you've yep. helped out with that. Yep. Yes. And we'll also help you um, set up your meters um, to do it from the city of Ann Arbor automatically. Um, there's just it, it's very um, you, you basically set there's a, a structure for setting up your meters, your water meters. Then you share those meters with the city of Ann Arbor utilities. And when they push the water data, they haven't come up with a standardized um, process for pushing the water data yet, um, i.e. when we ask them to push it, they do, <laughs> um, but they are, but it is available to get that also automatically. And they right. do not provide cost data, but uh, DTE does provide 
uh, both the, um, the usage and the cost. Mm -hmm. um, the other one, and when we do, uh, typically the 2030 district uh, will meet with uh, the congregation representative um, once a year to kind of review your energy use. And we this year we started calculating also um, greenhouse total greenhouse gas emissions because the Energy Star Portfolio Manager can do that now. Um, and uh, we also uh, will be using a program that's called um, that DTE gives us access to, which is called um, Buildy. And that's just another uh, way of kind of analyzing. Um, and this is the sorority house again. And like I said, we stopped, um, uh, what shall we say, um, putting all the data in here when we ran into some um, unit issues with them that we're working out. But this is kind of fun because um, it's just a different, again, a different way um, to look at your building uh, energy use. It'll say whether your gas or your electricity is going down and up. Um, they, uh, we're working with them to be able to put in the typical baseline that the 2030 district uses. And then it gives you kind of uh, what your total energy use uh, based on your building type um, the amount that's typically used for water heating um, or water, yeah, water heating, 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 and some of the other uses break down. This would be based on a typical um, house of worship, for instance. And you can um, split this up to just your, um, the, the electrical use versus um, your natural gas use. So it gives you, you know, a, a couple of fun things to do. Um, it just different ways of illustrating, um, you, you know, how you are using your um, your energy and they will have water data in here. Um, then they also have, you know, this kind of um, cycle, which uh, provides kind of uh, outside air temperature and and how that relates to your uh, electric use or your natural gas use. So you can see, you know, as the temperature goes down, your, your gas use goes up. So that's, it, it's just another tool that we have um, to be able to analyze because what you want to be able to do is take a look at um, how your uh, energy use and gas use is trending. And especially if you're starting to do, um, you know, energy efficiency um, uh, programs, uh, lighting retrofits, uh, all of those things, you can actually measure the progress. Um, one thing that I just want to, um, you know, kind of I'll open it up for um, people who want to, uh, talk a little bit is just some of the 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 kind of additional steps, if you will, um, to building decarbonization. Um, both the 2030 district and the city of Ann Arbor is are working diligently to help buildings decarbonize. And one, um, any uh, entity within DTE can uh, subscribe to My Green Power. What this basically does is it um, you subscribe to pr the purchase of green energy, green renewable, I should say renewable energy, um, and you can subscribe at 85%. And right now it's, uh, you know, um, and you can do this for your residents too. Um, and it saves you a few dollars a month. It's no longer a premium. And so we are encouraging everyone to do it because one, we need to push DTE to build more renewables and provide more renewables. And it saves you a little bit of money. Um, we wanna make sure people are benchmarking so that they are aware of whether their energy use is going up or down. Um, uh, and, uh, and then you can also, uh, what uh, the 2030 district does too is we can, uh, provide a chart of how well your house of worship, um, uh, you know, the energy use per square foot, the water use per square foot compared to other um, local 
uh, churches and houses of worship too. Um, DTE will provide a facility assessment free for um, any house of worship. Um, they are okay. They're not terribly detailed, but it's free. Um, the other thing is the Ann Arbor 2030 district um, provides a $5,000 energy management grant for any um, member. And that can be used for an en energy audit. Typically, um, unless you have a facility that's over 40,000 square feet, we typically cover your uh, ASHRAE level two energy audit. That energy audit gives you um, like a list of lights that you can replace and what type of lights you should replace them with. It goes through and gives you a return on investment for the energy conservation member measures that are suggested. And we also highlight um, the uh, equipment replacement that you would be looking at, um, the type of equipment replacement you would be looking at for uh, electrifying all of your, your, um, your HVAC and cooking equipment, et cetera. Uh, the other thing that uh, some folks have used the um, energy management grant for is retro commissioning. Um, when there is a, a system that really isn't working, let's say you, you're really using a lot of gas um, that would, you know, more gas than a typical um, house of worship might. We, you might want to use that energy management grant to have, uh, we have an engineer that we work with that goes in and usually works with your um, maintenance contractor, if you have one, um, to really go through the systems and make sure they're operating as efficiently as possible. Um, obviously, you know, encouraging folks to do energy efficiency improvements. Um, the um, 2030 district has uh, submitted in partnership with uh, several other organizations for some grants from the DOE for nonprofits uh, to do this. And we're also anticipating actually implementation funding, probably not until 2025 from Eagle um, that we can hopefully help people tap into. Um, obviously, some of the big, big dollars are, are involved in equipment replacement. Um, uh, Genesis has used um, their energy management grant because they already had a, an audit done um, some years ago. They used um, their energy management grant uh, to help offset their decarbonization plan that um, they contracted for. And then, of course, um, the whole um, idea of um, we need to, it, it's very uh, much more efficient and there's a savings associated with doing on-site renewables. So uh, that we have the, and the 2030 district also has a commercial solar um, technical assistance program. So if you're interested in solar, uh, we have um, uh, technical people who will come out and help you look at a feasibility and we have a template for um, uh, an RFP that you can send out and to get as much. It's very hard to get directly apples to apples in because solar is kind of design build, but it provides some uh, parameters. And then um, we uh, that person also sits down with you and reviews uh, your RFPs. And uh, then you can, you know, go up, move ahead with the. Um, contractor that gives you the best value. Um, and uh, as Murray's talked about, there is Solar Faithful that uh, provides um, no cost, no upfront costs, uh, solar to um, uh, congregations. Uh, we also, Murray and I are reviewing um, another uh, organization that has come up with a uh, no upfront cost uh, PPA for nonprofits as well. Um, so we're looking at that and that organization actually opens it up to any nonprofit as opposed to just congregations. So those are the resources. So you can kind of see how benchmarking gets you started. And it's a really nice tool to be able to educate your congregation about, you know, what you're doing and um, the impacts that it's having. So with that, I will uh, stop sharing and we can kind of talk a little bit about, you know, where you're at um, and questions about importing uh, data, access to the data, 
all of those things. Can I ask a quick question about that last slide? Sure. Uh, do you know if there's any commitment from DTE? I'm all in favor and as a homeowner, I've signed up for MI Green Power and had it to the highest percentage even when there was a fee mm -hmm. or like a increased cost to that. But do you know if DTE has any public commitment to use those funds to accelerate decarbonization outside of their regular plans? I know they have like a I think 2035 or something plan in terms of which uh, power plants they're decommissioning. Um, they they actually have um, updated their numbers uh, once already because of the success of their My Green Power program. Um, it is, um, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be um, MPSC and the legislator, legislature that is really going to mm -hmm. push them harder. Um, right. yeah. And but they use that as a factor in terms of their plans. Yeah. So, but this is a, this is to me a good market um, test for them because the more people that um, uh, subscribe and heck, if, you know, those rates go up, it'd be very interesting to see how many people would disenroll, um, right. you know, from it. But in any event, yeah, that's, that's how I, um, how I view my green power. And we do have um, um, quite a few members that have uh, also signed contracts. Um, you know, the U of M has right. a contract, um, Ann Arbor Public Schools, uh, WCC, Zingerman's, um, I'm trying to think of, yeah. And so, and the big automobile companies also do, but it, typically your houses of worship um, would be on the, they wouldn't be a contract. It would be the voluntary en enrollment. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I was hoping to be like, you know, for every thousand households, there would be like one more solar panel or something like that, that they <laughs> automatically How do like they quantify factor it? <laughs> in whether or not it's outside of their plans or not. Yeah. That, that would be great. Like one more windmill will be, yeah. you know, for every 10,000 or whatever rate. Yeah. Uh, well, they, be... the, the contract ones are the ones that they, what they've done is this is my understanding from the person that we work with um, who actually is a, 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 a you know, is a is a very good person is is very excited about being in the renewables but they have um they have so many um you know solar or wind sites you know in process and planned and they reserve so much for their small business and residential customers and then they um the big ones that they plan um and the big expansions are really based on their um contractual my green power and uh, any business, they do not e-certify the renewable for residential, but any commercial customer, it is a, a e-green certified renewable. So there's a little bit more accountability um, in 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 that enrollment. Okay, great, thanks. Hi, John. Jan, yes. um, we have subscribed to My Green Power at our house of worship for several years and we're still getting a charge per month whereas my understanding is for homes you're not is that because they're treating us like a business or it should be the same rate um if you want to send me a bill i will have our representative look into it because it should be a credit at this point okay i mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. get a copy of the more recent bill because i haven't looked at it myself Mm -hmm. It was, months. I think, March of this year or something that it became a credit, um, as opposed to a um, a uh, increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know the Genesis bill is very complicated. They 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 charge you your regular rate for electricity, and then they then they they charge you for the buy green power, and then they give you a credit right. back, and it. Yeah. And it works out that for Genesis, who's a you know we, we use a lot of electricity to maybe two to three thousand dollars a month. It's only uh, we do save a couple of bucks, mm -hmm. maybe one or two dollars a month. So by being enrolled, hey Jan, I also wanted to ask you that I, I got a, a flyer in the mail from DTE the other day, and it was about the 
DTE Clean Vision for Natural Gas Balance. And it looks like it's a similar thing to the My Green Power for Electricity. Can you comment yeah. on that? Yeah, I don't know. John, do you know if anyone's looked into that? Well, well, from what I've seen, I'm very skeptical because they're not giving you a credit. They're basically telling you they will plant trees. It's an offset program, and it depends how they set up the offset. As you know, many offsets are have problems. Are weak. Yeah. Yeah. And if if um I We're I one of the pro one of the programs we're going to do um, soon is going to be looking at offsets because people are, um, you know, if you enroll, if you do on site as much on site renewable as you can sign up for my green power, then many people still have that gas that natural gas and there are much better. I, I mean, I would say better programs that you can use to actually purchase offsets. And um, I, and I think um, there are going to be multiple people that are are going to need to do that, and that's uh, including you know the city, the university, et cetera. And uh, there is some talk uh, either doing it um, through it, it within Michigan or maybe even by the county to set up our own uh, renewable energy, um, a kind of a fund that people can actually pay into. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they do that because then the investment can be local and it, you can use it for, you know, putting renewables um, on um, people who don't have um, access to that kind of capital or whatever. Oh, yeah, we're, we're energy. trying to switch from gas to electricity as much as we can, but we continually get the counter argument that it doesn't make sense to switch to electricity because DTE gets most of its electricity from coal. And that is, um, I think they're gonna retire, the goal is to retire other um, coal. Is it by 2025 or something? It's relatively soon. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think they did move up that date. Uh, yeah. for the coal plant yeah. and and obviously so you're you're comparing 100 percent carbon generating power source versus one that's a mix and mm -hmm. if if you have electricity even though it's kind of an accounting uh situation there if you have my green power supposedly all of that is clean energy mm -hmm. so that's kind of the comparison although it is a higher rate for the the amount of like heat depending on your heating or um, technology that you use. Yeah, yeah, you really, and that's why the efficiency piece is so important uh, before you uh, electrify everything. Um, does this work for consumer energy? Um, I am in touch with um, the person who is doing um, the automated data uh, project for consumers energy. They are supposed to have that online in October. I haven't touched base with him because it's almost October 1st yet, but they right now they're only doing it for electric. They don't have a, I don't know why, um, the, the program will interface with Energy Star Portfolio Manager for electricity, but gas would still be, you know, if you go into your online account, there's an easy way. If you, let's say, you do it every, you want to do it every six months. You can actually download your usage and put it in a format to upload or paste into Energy Star Portfolio Manager. And I'm glad to, you know, uh, do a one on one with, with folks too. Um, so we can, depending on, you know, where you get your data from, we can, um, you know, provide you with the, the easiest way to get the data into Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So where are you located, Andre? I'm in Bridgeport, Michigan. Okay. So do you have consumers for both gas and electric? Yes. Okay. All right. Yep. So, um, yeah, so we can um, help that. And I can, you know, ease, and even if they don't get the automated thing going, if you're interested, um, I can, if you have access to your consumer's account, they have a way of downloading the information into an Excel spreadsheet, which makes it pretty easy. Um, to enter into Energy Star. So yeah, it's nice to do it every month, but you can do, you could do a whole year at a time. 
Um, I wouldn't go more than a year because you really want to, it's really six months that or by quarter or something like that. If you really want to see how your, your energy data is um, comparing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, just to uh, let you guys know, also, uh, I am a contractor for uh, solar energy as well. So mm -hmm. my pastor asked me to get on this call. So um, I thought it would be a good idea. So um, I've been in business for about four years and then I went on my own uh, last year. So. Well, that's awesome. Well, send us some, some information on mm -hmm. your um you, and you know the area that you serve um are you on the michigan with saves uh website i'm in the process of getting all that set up so excellent yes excellent because that'll also give you um do you know julie roth no uh, she is the city of ann arbor's solarize coordinator and um the, the what, what, what's her name julie roth and i can give you her uh, email address. But if you go into the city of Ann Arbor website, if you go into there and you just, or Google city of Ann Arbor solarize program, um, she administers that. And I'm sure she'd love to get to know you. Awesome. Um, I do go all over the state of Michigan. So. Uh -huh. Wow. Great. All right, great. Okay. Yeah. All right, as many as you can see. I'm yeah, wearing I, I, my and, our 2030 district t-shirt and it's yeah. in reverse you know it's, <laughs> yeah actually pronouncing it is good yeah oh you are i okay so maybe i'm not okay <laughs> <laughs> i did want to um get with um uh, murray uh you brought up some interesting things um about how you're actually have a solar system for your building uh commercial so I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about how that actually works for you. Sure. Well, we can we can do it offline. It doesn't have to be yeah. right now. But. Yeah, let's do it offline. And and Andre, I just wanted to make you aware that I am also on the board, actually president of the board for Solar Faithful, which Jan mentioned earlier. And we are looking for contractors to help us install solar across the state. So uh, I can, when we talk, I can let you know about that program. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, Andre, the Solarize program uh, for the city of Ann Arbor, basically what they do is they have a, you know, a pool of contractors. Um, J Julie runs a pretty tight ship um, as far as, um, you uh, a a person a household members who is spearheading a group. It's typically a group of forty people. They do um, a presentation and um, they she gives them uh, the contractors who are primarily Michigan Saves contractors that are in the area, and they can choose based on some interviews and and sort of track record who they want to work with, and then. There uh, is typically a 10% discount. Uh, it's a discount depending on how many installations that go with that particular um, Solarize group. And um, and typically, the, I, I'm trying to remember how many, it, There's a it's a sliding scale of what the percentage discount is. So the goal is you want to have at least 40 people and then typically about <clears throat> 10 people go forward and uh, uh, with, um, the installation, um, that's sort of been there, um, uh, piece and, uh, yeah, Mark. yeah. And then the 2030 district has that commercial technical assistance and that's right now that's RFP based, um, just because a lot of, um, commercial entities need to have a more formal, um, bidding procedure for, uh, purchases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Right. So maybe, I, maybe we have some time. Maybe I we have some my time. email in the chat. Okay. okay. Yep. Thanks, Andre. So maybe we have some time to just uh, brag a little bit about some of the energy improvements that we've made recently, if if you have. So at, at Genesis, just recently, we rented some scaffolding and we built the scaffolding up in our social hall and we changed our 
CFL light bulbs to LEDs in our social hall. And that was done in the last month. And uh, we thought, well, boy, we'd have to rent a high low or we'd have to have a contractor come in and do it. But actually we hired this new guy and he's great. And he actually did it himself, uh, one of the uh, facility people. And that's, uh, that's a great thing. We're also looking to seal the envelope of our building. And we know that on top of our social hall, we have some some obsolete equipment. We have like an old louver system up there that before we had rooftop units and air conditioning, it, it used to blow fresh air into the, the room and that's still there. And you can actually see light through it. So it's uh, it's open. So we're, we've, we're getting some quotes to remove that and to fix the roof after we remove it. And there's also on the social hall roof, there's a uh, makeup air unit on top of the kitchen where the stove area is and and that hasn't worked it's probably not creating it's not open to the air at least but it it needs to be replaced so we're getting quotes on that and to to fund that work we are applying to adama which is a jewish organization that encourages uh, green energy uh, improvements to your building and also uh, we share our, our building as uh, Tim knows with St. Clair's and Blue Ocean Faith and St. Clair's has a uh, we can get a grant from the Episcopal Diocese so we are looking at that they're both matching grants so we thought we'd match them against each other could someone please um just quickly run down the list. There have been a number of organizations listed that you can apply for grants of various sorts and various sizes. I And I have some, I have Solar Faithful, 2030 District, DOE. There were I, there were at least one or two others. Can somebody name those? I want to start researching things. No. I, Jan, I, I think she got most of them. I mean, the, the, the ones that Genesis is using is denomination specific so okay either be jewish or episcopal right mm -hmm. yeah and you might want to see if there are some uh you know lutheran um um you know grants as well okay. um yeah and uh the city of ann arbor will be uh, rolling out some incentives um there are also if you go into the doe grants typically for individuals are way um it, it, uh, what shall I say? Um, you wouldn't be, it'd be very difficult to administer. And is, typically they're looking for large uh, portfolios of, of improvements and so forth. They're not singular. Um, there will be, Eagle will be coming out with um, some grants once some of the implementation funding, that's probably going to be 2025. Um, and uh, there are, um, and when you do your energy audit, if you got if you got if you choose to do as a next step, Betsy, uh, an energy audit, um, there are incentives from DTE. They're somewhat small, but um, we're thinking that the city of Ann Arbor may add on a little bit to the DTE incentives to make them a little more robust. Um, mm -hmm. So those those are those are reasonable you know, options as well. And another option, uh, and also kind of a brag to Murray's uh, uh -huh. prompt was for, for Genesis, we uh, are completing a rain garden and then the city of Ann Arbor will, there are credits available for different water management things. So you get a credit on your bill for doing some of that work. So that's another thing to look in. And I think even if you go to, like stormwater credits from the city of Ann Arbor for non-residential, there's, I think there's even a grant program to manage uh, natural resources and water as well. So that's another tip there. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice program. Mm -hmm. And as things come out to Betsy, we're trying to, um, the 2030 districts, uh, we're, we, 
you know, work with Eagle because we get some of our funding from Eagle um, as every year DTE updates their incentive program. Um, so we will know in December what the 2024 incentives look like. Um, and, and then we'll see what happens with, you know, some of the other, um, grants that we're, you know, partnering with people for. Okay. Thank and Jan, you. do you know if there's like a spot on the 2030 Ann Arbor district for any grants that gets updated periodically? Um, we have to do that. The only one okay. right now that's up there is the energy grant, um, our, our specific energy grant application. Mm -hmm. And we do have links to the incentive programs for DTE. Um, yeah, but as as we know about things that are, are coming that will come become available, we will definitely post them and put those also in our newsletter. All right, and then Elizabeth or John, do you have any energy improvements you want to brag about? Sure. Um, we've been working. Uh, I'm from the Ann Arbor Friends Meeting, and we have three buildings on our property, a 50-year-old meeting house, a 100-year-old residential intentional community, and a remodeled garage where the, which we rent out to the um, interfaith network. And so we've been mainly um, replacing our windows with the dual pane we had a lot of single pane windows. We just replaced sort of the last ones on the main floor a few months ago. Unfortunately, replacing windows has gotten expense, more expensive. And in our, um, what we call Quaker house, the residential community house, the hundred year old building, there's like 90 panes of glass. And I don't know whether we're ever going to be able to replace those, we have uh, storm windows. So the, our current project is to replace the 50 year old gas stove that serves the residential community with an electric stove. And we're working on planning for that. Okay, great. And anything for you, Elizabeth? Well, um, at Zion, I mean, and I'm, I've been kind of peripherally involved in this until very recently. I've known Brian for decades and, and used to work on an environmental committee with him at, at Zion before I moved away for a while and now I'm back. And so I can tell you, um, you know, in terms of switching out light bulbs and that kind of thing, I think Zion is very far down the road on that. Um, there are other situations that we have we get bids and we get estimates um, and we are in kind of a dance with the building and grounds because the building and grounds sees the budget and we're looking at long-term benefit. So we are navigating that road and um, I can tell you that, that some of the things that were mentioned such as members forming an LLC to get the uh, solar panels and thing. I think those are fantastic ideas that would um, ease some of the resistance that we get. I'm sure anybody, anybody in any large organization knows that there are people that are gung ho for for green and and for, for environmental savings and all that. And then there are, there are other people that it's a little harder to convince. But uh, it's definitely. Um, very, very high on the priorities of of our pastors and of many of the members. So we are moving, moving down that road, but um, not as fast as some of us would like to see. <laughs> yeah, and but, now you could even, you know, with a, 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 you can do it with a PPA or if the congregation does vote now, the whole reason to do the PPA, one is, of course, congregational involvement, but uh, before you couldn't take advantage of the tax credit. Now there's a direct pay option for nonprofits. So um, you can, um, you know, um, you know, it's it's a 30 percent direct pay. So 30 percent of what you pay for the installation of your solar system 
um, is then uh, given back to you when you when you file your um, your IRS your IRS um, I don't know if you file a 990 or what the the process is, but um, that's a big change. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, like I say, I'm I'm really new to jumping on board these activities now that I'm back at Zion, but um, I'm constantly thinking, okay, what can I do to make this more palatable to people who are um, slower to to adopt um, the energy wanting, well, that's the bad, that's a bad word, you know, but slower to get on board with, with the importance of doing this um, as compared to the cost of it. And so I, and I know that's, that's a challenge for every organization. And I so. think part of what's helpful is um, certainly with solar, there's a, uh, a return on your investment and the and the payback you know it depends on the size of the system of course but um we are i have a ppa for ozone house and they're going to be buying back the system after five years with a very little it's you know it'll be completely depreciated um and we did a ppa with a the our Ours was an angel investor PPA, like a lot of congregations do, but it was basically um, no more than 90% of the DTE rate and um, and a 2% uh, return on investment for the folks that um, uh, did the, uh, the PPA. And we're actually down to 50% of the total DTE costs right now, just because the <laughs> 2% was, <laughs> um, <laughs> we were making too much money. <laughs> so um, we're going to finish up at 50% at the DTE rate. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. That's fabulous. Yeah. And then there'll be, you know, another 20 years on the panels, probably. Of, um, uh, and they'll have... It's it's it'll save them probably th about four thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, everybody. That's uh, it's uh, just about one o'clock. We'll we'll wrap it here. It, can I we'll stay another... on for a second and ask Jan a question? Sure. Because because sure. I missed the first half of the meeting and. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so... you can. And our next meeting will be probably sometime in November on maybe the second or fourth Wednesday of November, we'll have to decide. All right. Okay, so this this occurs about every other month? Yeah, every second month, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, right. and welcome. And what, Murray and I look forward to meeting with your group too in, in October, I think, we're coming to Zion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be great, appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, bye everybody. So, Jan, what I, I'm interested in, if you could just in a nutshell, tell me about the Energy Star software. Is that something from DTE? Energy yeah. Star Portfolio Manager is free. It's actually an EPA. Um, and if the government shuts down, <laughs> last time the government shut down, the site was shut down. <laughs> but um, that was the only downside. <laughs> um, so we have to input our data that we get from DTE, and then this program will compute things for us. Exactly. Now, you and if, if you guys should join the district, honest to goodness, okay? Because if you design, I will help you set it up. You'll have a campus of three buildings. We will get the data directly from DTE into uh, the Energy Star Portfolio Manager account for you and the water data from the city of Ann Arbor. Um, and you will be eligible for that you know, $5,000 uh, energy management grant. Okay. So uh, what does it take to join? I mean, I, I guess I thought we were already participating, but we haven't <laughs> formally joined. Not formally. I can send you, John, I'll send you, there's just a form that you fill out. Um, there, it, There's no cost. Um, and it just says that you will um, benchmark your energy and water use and work on reducing it. And we okay. help you. Yeah, it'll I'll probably have to take it through our business meeting. So it may take okay. 
a little while, but that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. And in the in the meantime, you know what? If you wanted to start the paperwork for the DTE stuff, all you have to do is check a box that you're a 2030 member, you know, and you know, you're gonna be. So <laughs> that, okay, that, that's good. fine. So I can send you right. that information too. Okay. Do you, do you have my email address or shall I give it to you? I think I have it. Well, why don't you why don't you put it in the chat and I'll grab it out of there and um, Well, let me see. I'm not used to doing this. Oh, then you want to just give it to me? I think I have it from Yeah, it's J A W I L L M S. Okay. At umich.edu. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, I, so I can send you the link. Um, and uh, yeah, I, there really isn't a downside. We make it pretty easy <laughs> um, to join. And then we can help you set up the energy right. uh, star portfolio manager. And um, then, then by that time, you'll be getting, you'll have the data hub set up from DTE and be able to, we'll be able to link the accounts. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. Take care. Right, you too. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.